Welcome to this YSL tutorial on Report Builder 2016. This very short video is going to give you a quick overview of how to install the Report Builder software on your computer. We're going to begin with a very quick overview of what the Report Builder software is designed for, just so you've got an idea as to why you're installing it in the first place. Then we'll move on and look at the process of downloading and installing the software using a simple installer application from the Microsoft website, before we wrap up the video with a very quick whirlwind tour of the Report Builder screen. Now before you start installing Report Builder on your machine, it is worthwhile knowing at least a little bit about what the software has been designed for. Now I appreciate that it is no great leap of the imagination to predict that it lets you build reports, but it is worthwhile knowing that Report Builder is part of the Microsoft SQL Server family of software, as it says in the title bar up here at the top. Now, although you can use Report Builder to build reports based on a variety of different data sources, primarily it's designed to work with Microsoft SQL Server databases. So what I've got here is a basic report, incredibly basic report, not really showing the full capabilities of the software, but just to demonstrate the simple principles. And what it is, is what it does, it contains a, a table full of Oscar-winning movies. So if I were to run this report, it shows me a list of all the films that have won Oscars from a database that's sitting on a SQL Server. So that data is actually coming from, if I switch to SQL Server Management Studio, it's coming from a database called Movies stored in Microsoft SQL Server. And when I run the report, it, re it runs a query that retrieves all that data and presents it in a more attractive fashion than is it stored in the underlying database. Now, although this is kind of useful in and of itself to run the report on my own machine and then be able to print it and even export it to various different file formats as well. Another really useful thing about Report Builder is that it allows you to save reports to something called a report server. And the idea behind a report server is that multiple different people can view that report server, providing they have permissions to do so, via a web portal application. So I've got that open here in um, Internet Explorer, as it turns out, but any web browser will do. And I've got a little folder in that um, web portal called Movies. And if I browse into there, I've deployed my Oscar winners report to the report server as well. So anybody with permissions and access to this particular URL can come to this report portal and then view these reports to see the data on their own machine. And again, they can then print the data or export it to various different hard copy formats as well, such as Excel, etc. So that's the basic concept of Report Builder. What we're going to have a quick look at in this video is how you actually get the software installed on your machine and then have a very quick whirlwind tour of the screen before we move on to different parts of the series explaining how to create these types of reports. Now there are several different ways you could get Report Builder installed on your computer, but just for the purpose of this video we're going to stick with a simple technique which involves first of all downloading and install a file. So to get started, pick your favourite search engine and then have a quick search for Report Builder 2016. That's the latest version that's available at the time I'm recording the video. And it corresponds to Microsoft SQL Server 2016, so you should find a link that says Download Microsoft SQL Server 2016 Report Builder. If you give that link a quick click, that will take you to another page with a download button. And if you click the download button, depending on exactly which web browser you're using, you might find that it starts downloading immediately, as it does for me in Google Chrome. Or if you're in, for instance, Internet Explorer, you might get a little option that says whether you want to run or save the file. So in Google Chrome, it's just downloaded the file directly to my downloads folder. It's not a particularly large file, it's only 22 megabytes. So if I wanted to see what that file looked like or where it was sitting, I can click the little drop down arrow there and choose show in folder. And that's the file that I've just downloaded. Now the name of the file that you've just downloaded won't actually say Report Builder 2016. It'll say Report Builder 3, and that's to do with the internal version number of the software according to Microsoft. So technically it's still Report Builder 3.0. Now slightly weirdly that version was first introduced in SQL Server 2008 R2. And although there have been minor updates to the software since in different versions of SQL Server, they haven't actually bothered changing the version number, which I always find a little bit confusing. Anyway, regardless of what the version number actually is, we know that we've downloaded the correct version from the page that we've downloaded it from, all we need to do now is just double click the file to start the installation wizard. So you'll get a little pop-up explaining then that you're about to install SQL Server 2016 Report Builder, that's a good sign that we're installing the correct version. So at this point you can just click the next button and then you'll need to accept the license terms. Um, should we read them? Does anybody ever read them? Um, no, I don't think they do. So I'm just going to agree to those and then click next. You'll get to choose where you want to install the software, I'm just going to choose the default location, then click next again. This page, depending on how much effort you want to make at this point to set up your report server, um, you could enter your, your target server URL in this dialog box. 
we're not going to bother doing that at this stage. You can change that very, very easily. And you might also want to point to different report servers in the real world. You might want to deploy your reports to various different servers later on. So there's absolutely no need to do this at this point. We can set this up a bit later. Let's just skip over this step and click Next. At that point, we can just click the Install button and we ought to get a little pop-up asking us, do we want to allow the software to make changes to the machine? So yes, we'll click yes. And at that point, it will install the software. It shouldn't take too long. It's not a particularly large piece of software. And then when that's finished, you can happily click the Finish button. Now that we've installed the software, we should simply be able to run it. And we can do that in a variety of different ways. You could perform a quick search for the file. So I could click the search button and then search for report builder. Or we could go to the start menu and browse through the list of folders and find the shortcut that's been installed. Slightly weirdly, is this actually worthwhile pointing out? The folder that gets created is has a, yet another different name. It's called Microsoft SQL Server 2016. And in my case, 2016 Jul MR Report Builder. So Jul is for July, of course. Uh, I think that was the last update. I can't remember what MR stands for. Um, anyway, regardless of that, there's a shortcut in that folder that will launch the Report Builder application. So at this point, I'm going to take the opportunity to create a quick extra shortcut on my start menu so I'm going to right click the report builder shortcut and then click pin to start and I'm just going to resize it a little bit as well so it's a little bit smaller and I'm going to dock it alongside all of my other SQL Server 2016 shortcuts. You may have seen these cropping up from previous videos. Uh, we have a variety of different video series, one on SQL Server 2016, one on Reporting Services 2016. So you may see these shortcuts from previous videos. Anyway, there's my Report Builder shortcut. At this point, all I'm going to do is click the shortcut to launch the application and see what it looks like. Now when you first open Report Builder, by default you'll be presented with the Getting Started window, which tries to help you to work out what to do next. So you could either use a wizard to add some items to the blank report that's been created, or create something called a data set, or open an existing report, or look at all your recent reports. We're not going to do any of those things in this video, this one's purely about getting the software installed, but it probably is worthwhile just having a very quick whirlwind tour of the screen. So I'm just going to close down the Getting Started window, and then just very quickly go over the basic tabs. It's an incredibly simple Microsoft Office style application as you can see. So you've got the Home tab in the ribbon which helps you to apply basic formatting options to things that you can select in the report design canvas. So for instance if I clicked onto a box here, this text box, I get various formatting options, many of the type you're kind of familiar with already from various other Microsoft applications I'm sure. You've also got this Insert tab in the ribbon which helps you to insert new objects into the report, some exciting sounding things in there which we'll have a look at later on in the series. And then there's a basic View tab here as well which allows you to turn on and off various different options around the screen. So I can turn on the Properties window and then turn it back off again and so on for all of the other objects. There is also a File menu which provides you with options for saving and opening files of course as you'd hopefully expect. Um, saving reports in reports Report Builder depends on whether you've connected to a report server or not. So as we skipped over that step in the wizard when we installed the software, we can't do that at this stage. But again, we'll explain more about connecting to a report server in a later video. It is worthwhile pointing out briefly the options dialog box. If I click onto the options dialog box, there's a variety of basic things here. So you could choose to suppress the getting started window if you want, didn't want that to appear when you opened up the application, you can control ba basic things like how many files appear in the recent items list. So nothing particularly sophisticated here. It's, a, it's designed to be a basic sort of application that focuses purely on the authoring and the creation of reports. But hopefully you found it useful just to have a very quick reference for installing the software. Later on in the series, we'll do some much more exciting things. If you like what you've seen here, why not head over to the YSL website where you can find loads more free resources including these videos, some written blogs and tutorials and even some exercises that you can download to practice your skills. Thanks for watching, see you next time.